people getting baptized this morning. And so if you're one of those people being baptized, can you just make your way behind the tank here and come and just join us on platform for a second? Can you give them a round of applause as they come? it's Jesus or my hormones but this is a moment this is a this is a family moment and we're just so excited that we get to do this together so congratulations already for what Jesus has done in your life church what we're going to do is we're going to ask each one of these people to share just a really brief hey why do you want to be baptized today what has Jesus done in your life what's going on in your heart and I pray that the words that they speak, the, the smile on their face, the tears coming down their eyes represents to you what Jesus has done already in your life or what he could do in your life. We have every demographic represented here. We have young ones. We have non-young ones. <laughs> We have families represented here. We have kids in the audience who are watching their parents being baptized today. We have parents watching their children being baptized today. We have a dad baptizing his son today. It's amazing what God does in lives and in families and in our family. And so let's go. Let's hear what is going on in your life. What I'd love for you to do is say your name and why you want to be baptized today. This is Migo. Migo is yeah. 10 and he is being baptized today. He was one, him and Maggie and Emmanuel, they were last minute additions. They've obviously seen in kids church, they've obviously seen in um, what we've been doing and what we've been talking about as a church and they've understood for themselves conversations with their parents, conversations that they've brought to the table, they've brought to their parents and they've realized Jesus is amazing. Jesus is so special and I want to, at a young age, tell the world that I'm giving my life to Him. Is that not just the best thing ever? At such a young age. It's beautiful. Did you want to share anything, Maggie? Hi, I'm Nina and I want to get baptized today because... <laughs> um, because the Lord has been so gracious to me and in my times of trials going through an autoimmune disease he healed me last year I was healed and I don't want to be lukewarm anymore I want to devote my life to him and I'm saying yes today <laughs> Hi, my name's Claire, also known as Vertigo Lady. You'll all know my story. Um, I turned away from him, but he never left me. He said, I am enough. I am everything I'm supposed to be. And he has shown me what love is. And I can't wait to be baptized today and wash all the old away and be salty and hot for Jesus. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaliyah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I used to go to church when, like a few years ago and I decided that I want to come back. And Pastor Liam was talking a few weeks ago about going all in for God this year and I thought that this could be one of my ways that I could do that. 
This is beautiful Holly. Holly has been in part of our church for a little while now and she's just gotten so invested in life group and in team and things like that. And um, her story is that she grew up in a Christian home, but today's the day that she's taking it. This is my story. This is not my family story. This is not me just following what my family brought me up in, but this is now me. And so I'm publicly declaring that my life is Jesus's. I am his. And so that's what Holly is saying today. Amazing. I didn't grow up religious, but I met a religious partner a while ago, and he brought me to Jesus, and I want to give my life to God for my daughter and raise her in the eyes of God. Good morning, City Point. I'm Zachariah, and I just wanted to continue my journey with God and just take that next step and become more intimate and just... You know, I want to show people more love and just prove, you know, like just be an example for people that, you know, Jesus is the way. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Chris. Um, it's only been probably just over 12 months since I gave myself to Jesus. Um, I get married next week. I couldn't think of a better day to do this on. Hi, I'm Jacqueline, and I've walked through to a point where I realized the only way to further deepen my walk with God is to fully surrender. And I chose to do it now as well because also getting married in four weeks, and I want to enter into that with the full covenant of God. My name's Aaron. Um, I think the reason I wanted to get baptised is so to show that I've, I've kind of got my own faith in God now, and also because it's like I've become a new creation in Christ. So yeah. How you going? My name's Pete. Um, just a little short story. Um, I've been with the bikies for about ten years. Um, I've died twice. I've been stabbed over 20 times on three different occasions. And uh, I think enough's enough. I'm 29 years old. I want to show the real Pete inside me. The only thing that's kept me along this life is my heart. And that's all I have left. And I've got a short circle of people around me. And I just want to prove to myself and I think Jesus is my first step. My name is Jay. I shouldn't be here today. I was very lucky to be alive today. But Jesus said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. For I know the plans I have for you, they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Today, I publicly give my heart to the Lord. Um, I'd just like to start off with, you know, how great is our God? Yeah? Um, geez, no. My name's Moa, by the way. And no matter how far I try to run away from God, He was always beside me. You know, I done a lot of wrong in my life, um, and I tried battling through life's obstacles by myself and failed each time. I took ten steps backwards and could never get up until I stopped trying to be a macho man and actually asked God to come and help me with it. Jeez, things were so bliss, things were so easy. He fixed um, my relationship with my beautiful wife and yeah, life can't get any better than this. The peace and joy that he gives you, honestly, I can't explain it. Um, hello.
Hello, my name is Roxanne. Um, yeah, God is so good. Our marriage is an absolute testimony to that. Um, you know, God gave me a word about four weeks ago and I was stuck in a situation that seemed impossible and I didn't know how I would go about it and how I'd cope with it. And God said, why are you stressing? I'm God. And sure enough, a few days later, he made a way out of no way. And that's exactly what God does. You give it to him and he will absolutely make a way when you can't do it yourself. Wonderful. (laughs) Tissues are available. (laughs) But uh, we are just overjoyed for what we're about to witness as a family. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to actually go back into worship. And uh, if you don't have a good visual of the baptism tank, it's okay. We're actually going to have a live stream onto the the screens and you can celebrate when they come out of the water. And then they're actually, we've got a prayer team ready to prophesy over each individual person as they come out and uh, speak what God's new life looks like for these people. And so for all the people on platform, I would love just to... Have you followed my wife who's now just about to descend? Watch out, she's pregnant. So if you can follow her and we can give them a warm welcome as they're about to make a massive line in the sand for their life. Family, please feel free to come up and uh, to be close to the front when, when your family member, your close friend is being baptized. But uh, remember family moments. So when they come out of the water, feel free to stretch out your hand to pray with them. But I'm, I'm going to hand over to the team. We're going to continue to worship and we're going to continue to celebrate the stories that we have before us this morning.
to our words. We want to declare your name. We want to declare the goodness that you've done in each of us. That you brought us out of sin and death. That you gave us eternal life, Lord. That you called us into your family, Lord. We have so much to be grateful for this morning. We have so much to thank God for this morning. We have so much to tell our world about. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. When I was lost and all alone, your presence was where I found home. You were there and you're here right now.
days of eyesight being healed. Stories of salvation. Restoration. we go. Fifteen stories. Sixteen. Sixteen stories. You can tell who the detail one in the relationship is. Sixteen miracles. Sixteen new beginnings. Sixteen stories rewritten. But Father, we thank you for every soul that was submerged this morning and came back in symbolism of resurrection life, Lord. Thank you that you didn't just die to sin and leave us in the grave. Father, that you didn't just leave us dead, but God, you called to live us a new life, a life to the full, a life full of the Spirit of God. We pray that the, the things that have taken residence in their life previously, guilt, shame, condemnation, oppression, addiction, sin, loneliness, separation from you, Lord, an eviction notice has been placed over their residency this morning and they are out and you were taking place, you were taking residence, you were moving in, you were reforming, you were renovating and you were creating change like no other. So Lord, we bless your mighty name this morning and as your family, as your saints, as your people, as your church, we praise your name. Amen. Amen. Give him some praise this morning. Just as their shirts say, they are alive today. I wonder where their stories will lead them. Let's keep watch, hey? So good. Well, we are um, flawed. I don't know. What do we do now? <laughs> um, so amazing. We would love to, um, if this is your first time here, what a special morning that you've decided to join us today, that you get to be part of this moment together. And um, we're going to continue on with our service. And um, we just want to make you brand new to this church. We want to make it known that you're welcome, that you can be part of the family. And so we would encourage you to connect somehow, meet someone um, there's host tags, people wearing host tags. There's connect um, QR codes on the front of your chairs. There's so many ways that you can get connected. And, and one of those ways is to simply turn around and say hi to someone in your row or the row behind you. So we're going to give you a moment to do that. So how about you turn around and say hello to someone, introduce yourself, happy Easter.
I love the chitter chatter. I love that some people are staring at us and waiting us waiting for us to say something. Other people, the extroverts, they're waiting, they're just chatting and keeping their row alive. It's amazing. Um, I would love to share with you two things that we have happening in the life of our church really, really soon. This Tuesday, everyone say this Tuesday. This Tuesday is our monthly remnant room. And if you're, you're hearing that word for the first time, the remnant is the small group of people, but in our church, it's a large group of people um, who come once a month to this place, to this house. And what we do is we worship, we strip back all the chairs. It's not a service. It's not a program. It's not a whatever. What we want to do once a month is we come together and we lift the name of Jesus through worship and through prayer. It's our monthly prayer meeting that we um, lift the needs of our region, lift the needs of our church, the prayer requests that come through. But beyond that, what's God doing in our community? We want to be known as a lighthouse. If, if this space wasn't here, if this church wasn't here, would the community know? And what we're doing in the spiritual, not just the natural in ways that we help, but in the spiritual, we're setting the atmosphere over our region through Remnant Room. Once a month, we, we pray over what are the needs in our community. And um, so we're inviting you this Tuesday, come, be a part of it. Be part of once a month coming together and praying over that. And um, the second thing is for all the ladies in the room, I don't know if you realize, but SWB is coming really, really, really quickly. SWB stands for Secret Women's Business. It is our annual conference. It is a three nights where we go away from family. We, we go away from, well, you still go back to them. Like it's three nights. So during the day you work and all that kind of stuff. But three nights where we intentionally draw away from all of our things that we need to do, our to-do list and our obligations. And what we do is we gather as a group of women to hear what God wants to tell us. We put aside all of the, the busyness of our mind and we sit together, we celebrate together, we feast together. We do this once a year together. And I love that this year's conference theme is revive. I don't know if some women in the room just hear that word and, and you just need it. You just need to feel revived. I personally like just need to create space in my life where I can get God to bring back vision, bring back those things that maybe I've had dreams dormant or things like that, where this is a space specifically designed. It's being built in the supernatural. God obviously has a plan. So what you need to do is register and get yourself in the room. You can register full-time or part-time, just jump online and um, we can help you out with um, any questions that you might have. But these speakers that we have, we've invited them on purpose because they walk the talk. They don't just have a great you know, aura about them. They've actually lived out this revival, this, this reviving, and they're, they're coming to share with us what God has downloaded in their heart to us. And so it's an amazing space. Don't miss out. It's coming up in about four weeks time. So now's not the time to dawdle or not just wait until the night before to register. Register now. You can actually do so at the concierge straight after the service. So they're my two things coming up in the life of the church, two amazing, amazing opportunities. So get on board. <laughs> get on board. No, love it. Well, we're going to come around our, our moment of generosity as a, as a church. And if you're a visitor or you, you don't uh, consider yourself family to this church, I, I was saying there's no pressure in this moment to, to give. This is, this is, as I said on that Friday, this is sort of like uh, when you go over to someone's house and when you get there and you try and play Monopoly, but they play by a different rule book than you do, we call it house rules. It's sort of like that. We are considering ourselves a family of God. And so we play according to the family house rules. And that's a generous spirit. That's what we are. It's not an act of generosity. It's a lifestyle of generosity. And many ways to give, they'll be on the screen bucket to come around if, you're under, if you want to know what that is. It's not just a portable bin. This is uh, that moment of generosity. But I would love to encourage us in a scripture this morning. It won't be on screen, but it'll be Matthew chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. And this is Jesus speaking. It says this, But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. 
I know I don't know about you, but often I find myself living sort of for the audience of other people. What will other people think of me? What if I do this, what will they say? If I wear this, this is how I'll be seen. If I look a certain way, that's how I'll be perceived. But I love in this scripture that Jesus says it's not about what other people think. It's actually about for an audience of one. It's not about the act, it's about the audience. You can be generous and not actually carry this, the generous heart of God. You can actually be doing it out of compulsion, out of necessity or out of perception. But God says, no, 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 I don't want that. I want you to do it for an audience of one. It's not about just the act of generosity. It's about the faith. It's not just about the finance. And so when we give, we're not going, hey, God, I'm, I'm buying my salvation, anything like that. We're saying, God, you've saved us. So, Lord, in response to your generosity to us, we respond in kind. In the way that you've given to us, so we give to you as well. And it's not for anyone else. It's not for the perception. It's not so anyone else can know about it. It's only for God. For the Father who sees us in secret will reward us openly. So as we give this morning, know that it's not for anyone else. It's about your conviction from your encounter with the living God. Just as they were baptized and their response was out of an intimate interaction with the Father, so too we give our lives and uh, a lifestyle of generosity in shoes. So let's pray this morning. Lord Father, we just bless your holy name. We bless that you have chosen us. God, that it's not that we loved you that made things happen. It's that you loved us first. It's not that we gave to you and so we owe you anything. It's no that you gave your son to us. And so out of a response of love, of thankfulness, of gratitude, Lord, we respond. We know it's your best, uh, it's our best interest that you have in heart. It's not about finance, it's about faith. And so, Lord, we give for an audience of one this morning. We bless your name. Amen. Amen. Those buckets are coming around right now. Now, and we're about to hear the word of God from our location, Pastor Pastor Carolina. She has been doing a quick wardrobe swap because she was in the water about 10 minutes ago. But at the end of the message, we're actually going to receive communion as a family. And so if you did not receive your communion emblems this morning, can you just shoot up your hand? And we're going to have a couple of people come around with some communion and just be able to do that in this moment. We're not judging. Maybe a little bit for the creative team. No. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, all right. Well, when that's happened, I encourage you, would you stand to your feet with us this morning? Because we love to honor the Word of God. It's not that we're just receiving a message. We're participating with God and what He wants to give to His people. So would you stand to your feet and would you honor our location pastor and the words she brings this morning? Pastor Amazing. Carolina. Wow. Why don't we give the Lord some praise on this Easter Sunday? Come on. We praise you this morning, the resurrected Savior. He lives. He lives. He lives. Come on. So good. Amen. Well, it's Resurrection Sunday, and you have a right to be happy. Anyone in the room so glad that he didn't stay in the tomb? Anybody here glad that he walked out of that thing? Anyone here glad that they can walk out of their tomb this morning? Amen. Amen. We'll grab a seat. And uh, just as we do that, I want to congratulate everybody who got water baptized. And if you're, <laughs> yes, if you're in the room, would you just stand to your feet? We just want to look at you and celebrate you one more time. If you were water baptized this morning, congratulations. I don't know the intimate details of your life, but the Lord does. And we congratulate you. So well done. What a day to get water baptized. All righty. Well, it is an incredible morning. And if you've got nothing else to be happy about, you can be happy that you have a living Savior. You can be happy that He made a way for you and that we all live because He lives. 
And the title of my message this morning is out of dot, 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 into dot, dot, dot. And so if you have a device, you can pull it out only to take notes. And I want you to write that down. Out of dot, 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 into. And as we're going through the message this morning, I'd love for you to receive a word for each of those dots. What is it that you've been delivered out of? And what is it that he's setting you into? Because he didn't stay on the cross, which is the out of part. It was the cross that delivered me out of whatever it is for you. Mine will be different to yours. It doesn't end there because he also then set me into. And that's what Easter Sunday is all about, is the second part of that statement, is that I didn't just stay forgiven, I was also set into new life. I also now have something to live for. In my life, the mantra that I've carried around is the fact that I was ransomed, my God paid a price for me, and then I was commissioned. I was not just ransomed, and too many Christians are stuck at the cross. But he also commissioned us on Easter Sunday. He said, I'm not just the crucified Lamb of God for your sin. I'm also the resurrected Savior for the life that I'm commissioning you into. Out of, into. And so we're going to read an account of someone in Scripture who embodies all of us in this room. All of us came to Jesus in desperate need. All of us. It doesn't matter whether you grew up under the seat in church or whether you spent 10 years with the bikies. All of us came to Jesus in the same state. All of us need a Savior. And so the Gospel of John talks about this person that I'd love for us to read about, and then we'll get into the Word. Can we put those passages up on the screen? John 20, I think. Here we go. Now on the first day of the week, this is Good Sunday. This is, sorry, um, Resurrection Sunday after Good Friday. It is a great Sunday. (laughs) And now on the first day of the week, the day we're remembering today, Mary Magdalene, can you say Mary Magdalene, came to the tomb early, came to the tomb early while it was still dark. You know, just recently we've been talking about how it's getting darker in the mornings and and we get up at 5 a.m. and last night Jared and I were talking about do we put dimmers on the lights because when you turn the lights on it feels like a hospital room and not moody for reading scripture and praying and and Maya's like, you know, mum, no one gets up before the sun. Like, no one has to have these conversations except you. That's why there's no dimmer on the... While it was still dark, and she saw that the stone from the tomb had been removed, lifted out of the groove across the entrance of the tomb. we we'll move on. Now, there are other passages that talk about Um, and, and in John, I'm skipping to verse 11 here, but they tell us that it wasn't just Mary there. Actually, John and Peter were there too. And when John writes about it, he brags that he actually beat Peter to the tomb. And um, yeah, he kind of totally big notes himself. You should read it. It's hilarious. And, uh, and it says that, that the two men, John and Peter walked into the tomb and found it empty. And they met an angel there. And the angel said the famous words, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And so they go running back to tell the disciples, but Mary, verse 11, remains standing outside the tomb sobbing, like these ones standing here this morning, sobbing. She remained outside the tomb sobbing. As she uh, wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels sitting there in white, At the end, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, why are you sobbing? And she told them, because they've taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. 
On saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know or recognize that it was Jesus. Amazing that we can be looking straight at him and not recognize him. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying so? For whom are you looking? And supposing that it was the gardener, she replied, I don't know if there are any women in the room who are so beside themselves with tears that you literally like mistake people for like a gardener, but there we go. She replied, sir, if you've carried him away from here, tell me where you've put him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, insert your name there. Mary, at this, turning, and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher or master. I want to tell you, when Jesus says your name, it rings different. When Jesus says your name, you know who's calling. Suddenly, you are lucid and aware. When Jesus says your name. Rabboni, she says. And he said, don't cling to me. Don't hold on to me for I have not ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Away came Mary Magdalene bringing the disciples the news and the word that she'd seen the Lord and that he'd said these things to her. I don't know if you're like me. Whether you have a story whether you recognize your desperate need for Jesus, whether there are some seasons in your life you'd prefer to erase and blot out. I don't know whether you're like me and when Jesus looks at you, you know he sees everything. When Jesus looks at you, they're not eyes of judgment, but they are eyes that both expose you and cover you all at the same time. I don't know if there's anyone like that in the room. And the cross was a beautiful moment. Mary Magdalene was there. In fact, it tells us that after hordes of people loved Jesus for providing lunch for them, after hordes of people loved Jesus for healing them, after hordes of Jesus laid down palm branches and sung his praises, there were only two or three people left at the foot of the cross, and one of them was Mary. I often ask myself, where would I be in that last week of the cross, if Passion Week? Which one of the characters would I be? Would I have been Caiaphas? the leading priest who encouraged all of Israel to crucify this man? Would I have been a zealot like Caiaphas? Would I have been like the Roman centurion who killed him and realized too late what I'd done? Would I have been Mary, one of the last two or three? Or would I have been like everyone else, forgetting about Jesus and moving on with life? maybe running like the disciples did and hiding, maybe denying Jesus. But it tells us that Mary was at the foot of the cross and that her and the mother of Jesus, also Mary, were watching in the shadows as they pulled his body down. Then she knew exactly where they laid him because she was following in the shadows. She didn't leave him. She didn't leave him. And can I tell you why? because it was only months, possibly a couple of years earlier, that this Jesus rescued her. It tells us in the Gospel of Luke that there were a group of people who followed Jesus around. In Luke 8, it tells us that Jesus went through the towns and villages preaching and bringing good news. The Gospel of the Kingdom of God and the 12 apostles were with him. And also some of the women who had been cured of evil spirits, one of them, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had been expelled. Her name, Mary Magdalene, tells us a little bit more about who she is. Because Magdala was actually a place on the sea, the southwest coast of the Sea of Galilee, known for prostitution. 
She was a demon-possessed adulteress who came to Jesus and he looked at her without judgment. He looked at her with the ability to heal her and restore her. The last person who should have been anywhere near a rabbi came close and he loved her. And scholars have tried to join dots and unfortunately none of our scholars were there. But some people suggest she was the woman caught in the act of adultery, hurled before Jesus by the religious leaders saying, what are you going to do with her? Because you know that every layer of society and culture demands judgment on this act. And he did not. He looked at all of those accusers and said, well, if you haven't sinned, go ahead and pass judgment. And they all turned away. And she was left at his feet. Can I show you a photo of how she found Jesus? That's how I found Jesus. Anyone else? Give me a wave if you found Jesus like this. The whole world wanting to throw stones. He was the only one who didn't. And the only one who could have. Another photo. That's how I found Jesus. And the most famous one, taken from the Passion of the Christ movie by beautiful Australian photographer Ken Duncan. If we're honest, if we're humble enough, we will admit we all found Jesus like that. We all found Jesus like that. And so she called him Raboni. Raboni means teacher. And as typical Jesus would, did what he should not ever have done, and that is teach women. In those days, a rabbi would not be anywhere near a sinful, demon-possessed woman. A rabbi would not be teaching a woman. But when he said her name, she said, Rabboni. The one who drew her near, discipled her, loved her, kept her close. And she did not leave his side when most others did. And that's what Good Friday is all about. Here's this woman, the one person who has restored her and loved her and forgiven her, is battered and bruised and lifeless on a cross. Saturday, they call it Silent Saturday. We sung about it this morning. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Well, it wasn't, except she didn't know that. First thing in the morning, because it was Sabbath on Saturday, she wasn't allowed to do anything on Saturday. First thing on Sunday morning, the first thing she does before the sun's up is goes to the tomb to find her Raboni. Grief stricken. What do I do with my life now? What does any of this mean now? And she finds an empty tomb. And the two show pony disciples come running in, having a race. You know, they find that he's not there. They chat with the angels. They run off. She's still sobbing. Sometimes we need to linger longer. Sometimes we need to not rush off. Sometimes we need to stay and take a moment in that tank just now. I said to nearly each one, take a moment. Take a moment. Don't rush this. She lingered, she stayed, and she saw him. I think it's remarkable that the first person Jesus revealed himself to was Mary Magdalene. The first person in all of history who saw the resurrected Christ was a demon-possessed prostitute. The first person trusted to be a witness 
of what it is to be set into new life was the most unlikely of all people. I wonder if you can relate. People often tell me, Carolina, you look so confident. Do you even need encouragement? I'm like, well, I've admitted I have a communication gift and I'm unashamedly in love with Jesus. Other than that, I definitely think he should have picked someone else and I'm the last person who should be doing this. Because we all find ourselves in a place, if we're honest, that we are not deserving. But he gives it to us anyway. He loves us anyway. He sets us into anyway. And I personally, just like some of you, found myself in turmoil and pain, only to say that I was delivered from my past by a God of unrelenting love. She was a desperate soul. She was broken. She had shame and isolation and estrangement. But he delivered her from all of the torment that she'd known her whole life, and he became a teacher. And we know for sure that she witnessed most of the things around the crucifixion. She was the first to speak with Jesus and that she was sent by Jesus to the others with the most critical message of the gospel. Without Sunday, we have nothing. Without Sunday, he's just another really good, really dead guy. And so the foundational principles this morning is that an occupied cross saves us out of death and an empty tomb sets us into life. And so what is this occupied cross all about? Well, it's the payment of sin and sin is the wrongdoing by God's standards. Sin is missing the mark and all of us have wandered away. We've all missed the mark, all of us. Some of us really intentionally, others of us unintentionally, but the point is we've missed the mark. We've all fallen short. And that falling short has separated us from God. But Jesus himself comes and he restores that by paying the price of our sin standing in the gap to pay a price you and I could never pay with his own life because the wages of sin is death. Someone had to pay the price and he didn't want it to be you. And so he paid it. And so we're rescued out of that sin. And it tells us in Ephesians that we die with him that we die with him. We were once dead in our sin and then he restores us. He restores us. And Mary Magdalene knew firsthand what that was like. She listened, she learned. And the, the, the priests and the leaders of religion could tolerate almost everything except when he would offer forgiveness because only God could do that. And here's this poser according to them assuming to be able to give forgiveness. And they burned with anger and eventually murdered him. Beaten, mocked, and crucified, he was not only a man, but God in flesh. You cannot nail the creator to creation, to wood, unless he chooses that to be so. Sacrificing himself. The cross represents your ransom and mine. The cross represents a balance paid. The cross represents your freedom, pardon, forgiveness, healing, restoration. The cross res represents all the things you can't possibly achieve or attain by human measure. The cross represents your rescue out of dot, dot, dot. Have you filled that blank in yet? Mary stood there devastated at his feet. It is finished, she heard him say. What does that mean? And just like Mary, you and I need to know that there is still more to the story. The label, the struggle, the anguish, the lifestyle, whatever it was that you were delivered from, please know today that is not the end of the story. God's plan for humanity carried over from Friday to Sunday. You were saved out of death and into life. The rescue plan was the cross. 
but the commission was the empty tomb. Grace isn't just the forgiveness of sin. It's also the empowerment to live free from its power. Yes, we're all wretched and ransomed, but now we're transformed from glory to glory by the grace of God. And that is the story of Easter. As we close, I'd love for you to stand to your feet. I'm going to read a long passage for us because we can get lost in a beautiful story. And I'm really good at that. I love stories. I'm a narrator. I love telling stories. But this is applicable today. And I want to read to you out of Romans 6. It's a long passage out of the Message Bible. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Jesus. A decisive end to that sin-miserable life. No longer at sin's every beck and call. What we believe is this. We get included in Christ's sin-conquering death. We also get included in His life-saving resurrection. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, He took sin down with Him. But alive, He brings God down to us. And from now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. That, mu- that means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you're not living under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. So since we're out from under the old tyranny, does that mean we can live in any old way we want? Since we're free in the freedom of God and can do anything that comes to mind? Hardly. You know well enough (laughs) from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it will be your last free act. But offer yourselves to the ways of God and the freedom never quits. All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do, but thank God you started listening to a new master, one whose commands set you free to live openly in his freedom. I'm using this freedom language because it's easy to picture. You can readily recall, can't you? How at one time, the more you did just what you felt like doing, not caring about others, not caring about God, the worse your life became and the less freedom you had. How much different is it now that you live in God's freedom? Your lives are healed and expansive in holiness. As long as you did what you felt like doing, ignoring God, you didn't have to bother with right thinking or right living or right anything for that matter. But do you, do you call that a free life? What did you get out of it? Nothing you're proud of now. Where did it get you? A dead end. But now... On Resurrection Sunday in 2024, you found you don't have to listen to sin tell you what to do. And you've discovered the delight of listening to God telling you what to do. And what a surprise. A whole, healed, put together life right now. And more and more on the way. Work hard for sin your whole life and the pension is death. But God's gift is real life eternal life delivered by Jesus, our master. This morning, we're going to receive communion. We're going to sit around the table of communion together. If you want to open it, prepare your hearts, take part in communion together. That, that right there is the sound of freedom.
The night before he was crucified, he sat around a table and broke bread and shared wine. And he said, do this as often as you meet together and do it in remembrance of me. This is my body. The bread you're holding, the little wafer represents his body that was broken. He said, remember that. And he said, this is my blood. That juice represents his blood. Do this in remembrance of me. The blood that was poured out, the life that's in the blood. Do it in remembrance of me. And I can't help it. I'm a bit of an activist personality. Every time I take communion, I feel like I'm just reminding of the enemy of his defeat. Every time I take communion, I remind him of the victorious work of the cross. I remind him of how hard he tried to take me down. And I just take my communion as smug as I can. Remind him of my Savior who didn't just die, he rose again. He didn't just ransom me, he commissioned me. And I might be the last person worthy, just like Mary was, but I'll go and tell, because actually that's all I've got. That's all I've got. And this morning on Resurrection Sunday, Lord Jesus, we take communion in remembrance of you today. Remind us today the 31st of March on Easter Sunday, the second part of the equation. What are you commissioning us each individually and uniquely for? Let us write our own mantra that lives a life worthy of the call of Jesus. That call, because when you call our name, we know who's calling. Let us live a life worthy of the call of Jesus Christ. So as you take communion this morning, if you've been able to already, why don't you just say that statement that is true to you, I've been rescued out of and commissioned into, fill in the blanks. Let's receive communion as the worship team leads us this morning. your faithfulness I've seen you breathe life within so I'll pour out my praise again you're worthy God you're worthy of all of it your promises never fail I've got stories I'll live to tell so I'll pour out my praise again you're worthy God, you're worthy of all of it. He is worthy. You left the throne and chose the cross, laid down your life to rescue us. The Savior then, the Savior now. But even death was not the end. You conquered hell so I could live, resurrecting then, resurrecting now. Say that again. We are victorious. Come on. Resurrecting.
out of and into. Out of and into. This morning, I'm not sure what part of the equation you're in. Whether you've ever said yes to Jesus to start with and that you feel like you're still in the grave, you feel like you're still dead. Or the story of Jesus is not so that he can make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. He didn't come for behavior modification. He became the Savior. He came to meet you where you were at so he could come down so you didn't have to try and climb up. Have you been trying to climb? Have you been trying to make it on your own? Well, this morning, he's extending an invitation to you. Come out of and into. He says it's really simple. Here's all you have to do. Believe on Jesus. Confess that he is Lord and you will be saved. He's not asking for anything else. It's just believe. Just believe that he is Lord, that he's come to save you, that you couldn't do it yourself. Confess that He is Lord. Come out of and into. Maybe there's another group of people in here that you've said, yes, I want to follow Jesus, but you've actually still been living in the grave. You've been trying to perform CPR on things that need to stay dead. But He's saying, no, come out of and into a new life. Stop trying to resurrect old things. I'm resurrecting a new person. The old ways have gone and the new things have come. You've said yes to Jesus, but you haven't been walking in the newness of life, in the power of His Spirit this morning. And if you're in either of these camps, there's a simple invitation for you this morning. Respond. Respond to Him. And it's going to come in the form of this. I'm going to ask for every eye to be closed in just a moment. Then I'm going to count down from three. And on three, I I want you to shoot up your hand. I'm going to see you. We're going to get to pray together. And then we're going to ask you to have a conversation afterwards. That's it. You're in this place. You're in. You need to come out of the grave. You've never said yes to Jesus or you've said yes and you've just not been living in the fullness of life. This morning, it's going to be a different story. As every eye is closed in this moment, just a moment of privacy. No one looking around. It's not about them. It's about you and the Lord. If that's you in this place, you need to say, yes, I believe on Jesus as my Lord and Savior. On the count of three, I want you to shoot up your hand. I'm going to see you, recognize you. You can put your hand down and then we're going to pray together. Then there's that conversation. That's you. You just need to say yes to him because he said yes to you. On the count of three, shoot up your hand. One, two, three. That's you. Shoot up your hand. I see 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 your hand. Just a moment longer. As Pastor Carolina said, just just linger. That's you. You need even feeling it. Feeling the invitation from the Spirit of God. You can still shoot up your hand. Lord Father, I thank you for every person in the room this morning. Every person that may have been joining us online, but Lord, if they responded to you this morning, there may have been a hand lifted, but there may have not have been. But what matters is the heart that was open to you. The confession of, I believe on Jesus this morning. I'm coming out of and into. Coming out of the old. I'm coming out of the grave. I'm coming out of sin, out of oppression, out of condemnation, out of shame, out of guilt, into life, into peace, into joy, into His way, into His kingdom, into His word, by His Spirit. Lord, our Father, I thank you that they're not a slave to you, but you've called them a son or a daughter of God. Lord, you look at them with love. You look at them with joy, and you are in overjoyed this morning that they've said yes to you. You've been waiting. 
So Lord, we just honor you this morning. We pray, give them passion for your word, passion for worship and a passion for your people. And God, this would not be the end. This is the beginning of something brand new in their lives. So we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can we honor God and honor those people this morning? Hey, I saw some hands and maybe some of the team were able to see you as well. But what's most important is God saw you. And as I said, this isn't the end of the conversation, it's the start of it. We would love to give you a free Bible, we would love to connect with you, because we don't just want to leave you there, we want to walk with you on your next. We don't, if you're just visiting and you, you can't stay and connect in this church, we'd love to connect you in a church. We know some people that know some people. And so we'd love to, for you to connect with those, but we'd love to have a coffee with you, have uh, known your story, see if water baptisms may be one of your next steps. Whatever it is, we would just be joyed to have that conversation and to walk with you. So please see the yes bar, the big wall on the way out. If someone doesn't come to you already, that's where the team is. That's where the Bibles are. We can connect you with at that location. But we're going to go out praising God in this moment. Make sure you stick around for a coffee. Uh, stick around uh, for some food. Meet someone and connect this Sunday. 5 p.m. service tonight. We're joined by Pastor to Chris Hodgman. We're going to have some burgers. It's going to be a great time. See you then. Yeah. Come on, let's praise our God this morning. Let's go. I was buried by shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I made Amen. Amen. I was breathing, but not alive. For my failures, I tried to hide. It was my turn. Till I made Hey.